So these are snowdrops that were planted as singles a number of years ago. You can see here beautiful crocuses. Look at these. These are all self-sown wild crocuses that the pheasants love eating the heads of. You can see there's more of them and loads more right here of uh, wild crocuses. These propagate themselves. Then up here, these are a kind of uh, snowdrop that a friend of mine gave me a clump of about five years ago. They're beautiful, big, broad-leafed snowdrop and they make seed heads. So I sowed a bunch of the seed heads. Now these are the ones that multiplied. This is the embankment that I planted them all in last year. So these are the ones that have self-propagated as bulbs. Sorry, they, you know, as the bulbs. So you can see, you can see how tall they are against the dogs. So they're big snowdrops. And none of these are the seed ones. These are the bulbs that I split. I had them for about five years and kept splitting them. And you come over here, and these are the ones that I grew from seed. They're not flowering yet. You can see that's a seedling. There's more seedlings. These are bluebells in here. Those are bluebells. And here's a seedling that is flowering. So the seedlings I planted in this embankment here, it's under some trees that I also planted. And what I wanted to show you here, there's no snowdrops all the way around here, but this oak tree I planted about 15 years ago. And yesterday I planted these snowdrops here. Right here, they're a beautiful snowdrop and I got them at a local florist and they're called Mount Everest. So I split them up like this because then they will grow into groups. You can see there's Inca. So there I got a series of pots and they had four or five plants in each one. So you can see here they are. That's the Everest snowdrop and you can see they have a lovely green stripe on them. So over time these will turn into a kind of drift of snowdrops underneath this oak tree. So they're planted all in a small drift right there. I've spread out the singles and in about five years time they'll be clumps and I'll replant them again or I'll dig them up and spread them out again. So this is what the beech tree looked like 10 years ago with only a few clumps, but I had them much closer to the base of the beech tree. So I'm gonna go and show you that now. The base of the ash tree where I planted a few snowdrops and you can see they've thickened out. But this is the beech tree. And at the beginning, a number of years ago, you can see the celandine this is celandine is coming up as well. So that's celandine and that's cow parsley. That's bluebell and another celandine over there. So initially, oh, and there's crocuses. You can see there's a lovely clutch of crocuses there. So ideally I should, that's uh, self-sown crocuses. I didn't sow those. So I should, when they finish flowering, I should split them up and spread them through the snowdrops. But these snowdrops, at the very beginning, these snowdrops, I only planted a few just around the base. Literally one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven. I planted a ring of them around there. And I've slowly been planting more and more and separating them out till you get this kind of swathe of snowdrops. So that has taken 10 years of growing, splitting, transplanting of snowdrops. 
And the initial snowdrops were ones that my grandfather brought back. I don't know if these are the Russian ones or the Serbian ones, but he brought them back when he was teaching English in those countries as a student in the 1920s or 30s as a present for his mother. So I'm just multiplying and propagating all his gift to my great grandmother. So that's 10 years worth of work. You can see these are thin here. These ones are thin because we put, those are put out about, um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but then give them another couple of years and they will flesh out like those ones there or like these ones here. These were some single ones. So that is how I want to make drifts of snowdrops under the trees. Uh, and it also makes them last longer and it's great for early pollinators. And you can hear the birds. Despite the rain, birds are singing. And here you can see there's more drifts of snowdrops over there. But these are ones that I've separated out and planted about. So these hopefully will multiply more. You can see them all, as will the crocuses. So it's all a pro process, a slow process. And here comes the rain. You can see in the distance over there, that's the bank of snowdrops that I split and transplanted last year. So this side are the ones that were bulbs and over there were the ones that were the seeds. Slowly but surely, there will be a wonderful drift of snowdrops through this whole area. At least that's what I'm planning. Snowdrops and crocuses. Isn't that right, you beautiful dog? She really doesn't care about flowers. She just cares about sticks and balls. Isn't that right, you beautiful dog? And look, there you go. Inca's sitting on her tail. <laughs> Staying warm as I preach about snowdrops drifts. <laughs>